Hello and welcome to you all to this pre-recorded service for Trinity Sunday on this the 30th of May 2021. God is everywhere in plain sight, round the corner, behind us, next to us, wherever we live in our lives. Each time we meet God, our relationship with him grows and shapes the path on which we will travel. God, the Father who protects us. God, the Son who took human form to take our punishment for sin. God, the Holy Spirit, who brings his power that our faith may grow. The Trinity, three in one, three persons, but only one true God. A God of mystery and reality, a God of power and generosity, a God of grace. Our colic for this Sunday, let us pray. Father God, you have created all things and through Christ revealed your salvation in all the world. Give us a vision of your glory and by your Holy Spirit, fill us with life and love that we may praise and serve you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Our call to worship is based on Psalm 29. Please feel free to join in with the responses as they appear. Let us pray. The voice of our God and King is heard in blessing as it echoes in its majestic power over all creation. We come to worship our God and to celebrate the mystery and reality that is God's everlasting glory. The voice of God is heard in all creation and it responds with joy to the voice of its creator, sustainer and renewer. We come to worship our God and to celebrate God's power and generosity towards all creation and all peoples. We come to worship our God and to celebrate the way we are welcomed into God's glorious presence. The voice of our holy God is heard in the sacred spaces and God's grace is revealed as we worship. Amen. Let us now worship God with our first hymn.
worship and adore confession. God of truth, we bring to you our sorrow for our sins. For seeking earthly absolutes and not eternal mystery, we are truly sorry. For rooting ourselves in the finite and not nurturing the infinite within, we are truly sorry. For saying I much more than we, and for damaging relationships, we are truly sorry. Forgive us and strengthen us, we pray. For we are truly sorry. Amen. God of the living word, we thank you for gift of scripture, for the truths it invites us to embrace, for the questions that echo our own, for the conversations that puzzle and enlighten us, for the encounters that inspire and inform us, for the certainty, the mystery, the grace. We praise you today and always. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thanks be to God for all of our prayers and praises this morning. Amen. Hello. I've come out into the garden and sitting under this apple tree. Oh, this by the way, this is Mandy. Mandy, say hello. Hello. Now, Mandy asked me earlier, what was the Trinity? 
I thought this is very difficult to explain and many, many people have tried and it still stands confusing even to me now. But I thought of something that maybe I could explain to her under this apple tree. Have you ever thought of an apple as the Trinity, three in one? Why? Because an apple is truly three in one objects. Yeah, a simple apple. Look, here, do you want to hold it? A simple apple is three in one objects. You see, an apple can provide an explanation that's similar to the Trinity. The uniqueness of each divine person as one. Now, an apple has three parts. The seed, the flesh and the skin. When you cut open an apple, cut it in half, you can actually see each of these. Yes, yes, I'm going to cut it in half. Just, just wait a minute. Oh, some people are impatient. Right. Now, see, when we cut it in half, we can actually see the skin around the outside. Can you see that? We can actually see the flesh in the middle, which we like to eat, don't we? And we can see the seeds in the middle, can't we? Now, the skin is like God the Father, because it protects us. It protects the apple and God the Father protects us. And the flesh is like God the Son, because Jesus took on human flesh. And the seeds are like God the Holy Spirit. Because through his power, we grow in faith. And if we plant seeds, what will happen? Yes, a tree will grow eventually. And that's what happens. The Holy Spirit is planting that seed in our heart. Each of the parts of an apple are different. But they're all an apple. So are the persons of God all different? Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Yet they are all one, one true God, like one true apple. Now, do you think that helps? She doesn't know. Maybe it has. Amen. I read him from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two wings they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I'm ruined, for I am the man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with live coal in his hand, which he had taken the tongues from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Oh. 
can see my hand will say I who made the stars of night I will make their darkness bright all who bear my light to them whom shall John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God 
unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. God, God, are you there, mate? Yes, I'm here. I'm always here. You're God. I am the Holy Spirit. One person of the triune God. Oh, great. Holy Spirit. That's exactly who I needed. Yes, I know. That's the point. Oh, right. Yeah. Look, I've been reading about this Nicodemus fellow, and I don't understand any of the stuff about being reborn. I assume there's some kind of hidden meaning that I'm just not getting. No, it's quite simple. You have to be born again. What? So I have to climb back into my mother's womb so she can push me out again. I'm not sure she's going to be too happy about that, you know. She complains often enough how hard it was to give birth to me when I weighed 13 pounds. I can't imagine what it'll be like for her now I'm 13 stone. No, your flesh body was born of your mother. But to be born again, you need your true self to be born of the spirit. OK, but I know what it means to be born of my mother. She gives birth to me. I inherit her DNA. These baby blue eyes I get from my mum. My hairline and my stomach come from my dad. How can I be born of the spirit? In the same way, you gain qualities from God. Rather than having your own temperament, you get to inherit from him. You are made to be in his image. By being born of the spirit, you can become your true self, the person you were made to be. I can be like God. Can I destroy sinful cities? Pow, pow, pow. Or set bushes on fire? Ooh, ooh. Can I turn water into wine? I could make a fortune. Maybe, if that is what God has planned for you. Or maybe you will speak in tongues or heal the sick. Or be sent to a sinful city to preach the word of God. Or maybe you'll be called to a simple life of poverty and prayer. The point is, your life will be guided by God. You will be who he made you to be. You will see others with his eyes, love them with his heart. Forgive as he forgives. You will be freed from having to decide how to react to life's challenges and not knowing who to love. Instead, you will just be compelled to love others. That sounds great. I can find peace. To be honest, that's mainly why I come to church for anyway, is the peace. No pressures to get anything done for work or family because, you know, I'm at church. Yes, 
Peace like love is one of the fruits of the spirit, as are kindness, patience and joy. You will know all of these when you are born again of the spirit. Patience, peace, that's what I'm here for. I especially enjoy the sermons. You don't have to say anything like in the prayers, so you can just sit quietly and let your mind completely wander. It's great, a real gift. Last Sunday during the sermon, I planned out all the family meals for the next week. I've been meaning to do it for days, but I just hadn't found the time. Well, I think you might need to find a new time to do that. You see, having the Holy Spirit inside of you comes with other gifts too. You will gain wisdom and knowledge. You mean, I'll actually understand what the sermons are about? And power too, whether that be powers to do healing or to speak in tongues or whatever. When you act in the Spirit, you will act with the power of God. That all sounds a bit effortless. I'm really just in it for the peace. No, 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 no. Remember Pentecost, when I came on the disciples like tongues of fire. I'm here to get you fired up, get you revved up, give you a bit of oomph, a bit of get up and go. I don't know if I have the energy for that. That's the point. You don't need to. I will provide you with the energy. I'll start the fire if that's what you need. I'm a fire starter. So, I don't need to do anything much, really. Is that why the metaphor is like being born? The baby doesn't have to do any of the work. The mother does all the effort, the baby just lies there. Exactly. All you need to do is submit and let me take your burden. I can do that. Thank goodness I can receive the spirit. I feel so alive. Right, now's the time for your spiritual gifts. Let's see, what shall we go with? Interpretation of tongues, miracles, prophecy. That's the other way it's like being born. This is the scariest thing you'll ever do. Friends, on this Trinity Sunday, our theme is questions of faith. Before we explore and unlock this theme, let us pray. We come to you, God the Father, and bring our childlike questions. We come to you, Jesus the Son, and bring our urgent questions. We come to you, Holy Spirit, and bring our unspoken questions. Receive us. Help us and refresh us as we learn and as we pray. Amen. When Nicodemus meets Jesus, he is prepared to ask questions. But he begins with a statement of faith. He said in verse 2, We know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these, th these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Nicodemus calling Jesus a teacher come from God and affirming Jesus' works that Jesus is working by God's power. And then in verse 3, Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. In response to Nicodemus' respectful introduction, what Jesus says here seems that he and Nicodemus are talking about two different things. Nicodemus is thinking literally but Jesus is talking metaphorically. Nicodemus keeps asking questions because he doesn't understand Jesus' answers. In this age of information, we think we know all the answers 
to all the most important questions. We know how the universe began and what it is made of. We can analyze the DNA of every living thing and we can take detailed photos of every stage of a baby in its mother's womb. But Jesus' statement that no one can see the kingdom of God without being born again from above makes no more sense to our modern science as it was to Nicodemus at that time. A story goes that once a little girl was asked to write an essay on birth. She went home and asked her mother how she had been born. Her mother, who was busy at the time, said, A big bird brought you, darling, and left you on the doorsteps. Continuing her research, she asked her dad how he had been born. Being in the middle of doing something, her father similarly answered the question by saying, I found at the bottom of the garden, the fairies brought me. Then the girl went and asked her grandmother how she had arrived. I was picked from a gooseberry bush, said grandma. With this information, the girl wrote her essay. And when the teacher asked her to read it in front of the class, she said, there has not been a natural birth in our family for three generations. When Jesus spoke to Nicodemus of being born from above or being born anew, he was not talking of natural birth. He was talking of a spiritual birth, a birth that is somehow supernatural. Many people believe that being born again a second time by the power of the Holy Spirit is not only difficult to understand but is unnecessary. But Jesus said that being born again was not just an optional thing or one of the ways of saving faith. It is the only way of saving faith. Jesus said that no one can enter the kingdom of God without it. Can we, after all, choose to be born? It can only be given. Those who are born of the Spirit make no sense. Nicodemus seems to struggle to understand the metaphor of being reborn. And people, they react in many ways to that born again phrase. Some think they, there are two types of Christians, ordinary Christians and born again Christians. Others think that born again means you are weird. You smile all the time, clap at lively songs in church. And some of us, like Nicodemus, believe that it's our good works or being spiritual that make all the difference. Like if we do enough good stuff, go to church, give to charity, and help people in need, then God will let us into heaven. But in the Bible, born again means none of these things. What Jesus is saying that getting into heaven is like being born all over again. That's what Jesus wants Nicodemus and us to understand about being born again because eternal life isn't earned by good works and it isn't earned by 
being spiritual it means that anyone no matter how messed up or lost or hopeless or guilty or ashamed can be saved the door is open to anyone and their discussion ends with jesus is summing up his life and our faith for god so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life it doesn't say god loved nice people or god loved israel it says god so loved the world that's everyone that whoever not just nice people but whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life in verse 17 it says god sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him his purpose is to save us and his main purpose of incoming the first time was not to condemn the world but to save the world who already was under condemnation what jesus offers nicodemus and us all is a new start a chance to begin all over again as a newborn baby born of the spirit he didn't say as you have made so many mistakes and it is going to take the rest of your life to fix up this mess before i have to judge you rather he says in verse 14 like the bronze serpent moses lifted to save the israelites i will be lifted so that everyone who believes in me will have eternal life remember he doesn't say we will earn eternal life but we will have eternal life because of him our experience of god is a marvelous and mysterious experience we have and we know the god of isaiah the god who is high and lifted up in his temple the god who speaks and brings forth all of creation we know that how god made everything and we must ask ourselves today have we been born again or are we like the religious person nicodemus confident that our religious background is enough or that our sincere search for god is enough but we can't generate new and eternal life through our own efforts it requires a supernatural washing and rebirth that happens only when we ask the holy spirit to cleanse us and gives us new life that is what jesus offers it is the holy spirit at work in us it is a fresh start to a whole new way of life god invites us all to receive eternal life he is an inclusive god he loves all his children and gives them all a chance to enter into his kingdom let us think about our unnatural birth and about the mystery that is involved in it the mystery of god the god who made us and gave us our first birth the god who saves us by becoming one of us dying with us and for us the god 
who lives and works in us and gives us our second, our unnatural birth. Let us pray. Life giver Lord, we cannot be religious enough or righteous enough to deserve to enter your kingdom. We need a miracle of rebirth. Only you can provide. Eternal God, we come not with answers, but with our questions. Pour your love upon us that we may walk with Jesus, your son, on the journey to life in all its fullness. We thank you that through Jesus' work of atonement and redemption, we have access to the life gate of your kingdom. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Prayers of Intercession the response is, God of mystery and compassion, you know us and you love us. Called by the great God we worship, let us pray for the church and for the world. We bring before you, O oh God, the needs of the church in its weakness and, and potential. Revive and refresh us, teach and direct us, inspire all who preach teach and uphold all who suffer for their faith in any way. God of mystery and compassion, ye know us and ye love us. We bring before you, O God, the problems of our age and our culture. Renew in us a commitment to community and mutual trust. Give a sense of value to all who despise others and themselves. Protect the vulnerable from images of violence. God of mystery and compassion. You know us and you love us. We bring before you, O oh God, the hungry and the malnourished, the greedy and complacent, those who are ill and those who care for them, the unhappy and those who comfort them all who are undergoing painful treatment and surgery, and all who have no one to turn to, God of mystery and compassion. You know us and you love us. We bring before you, O God, those who have died in faith and will now see you face to face. God of mystery and compassion. You know us and you love us. We bring before you, O God, our lives, and all that we are, including our successes and our failures. We thank you for the gift of life and ask that we may get to know you more deeply day after day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who tr- 
truly believes that moment from Jesus the pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. May the blessing of the God of peace and justice be with us. May the blessing of the Son who weeps the tears of the world's suffering be with us. And may the blessing of the Spirit who inspires us to reconciliation and hope be with us from now until eternity. Amen. <laughs>